Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Jay Chen with Wushu Biologics. Thanks, Leah, for the introduction. Many thanks for all of you to sign up for our web seminar. Let's start our discussion today on scale-out biomanufacturing. In today's presentation, we will first talk about how this scale-out strategy allows for the use of disposable bioreactor for commercial manufacturing, then discuss the unique advantages of using a scale-out strategy and compared to the traditional scale-up manufacturing model. Next, we will discuss how facility and the process design can assist in controlling overall development and the manufacturing costs. At the end, before the summary point, we will briefly talk about aspects of commercial manufacturing facility using a scale-out approach from a regulatory compliance perspective. Throughout the talk, we will be using the Wuxi Biologics new scale-out facility as a basis for our discussion. First, we will talk about how a scale-out strategy has realized the dream of using disposable bioreactors for commercial manufacturing. As we know, biologics development in last century was primarily seeking blockbuster products and thus building large stainless steel fixed tank based manufacturing facility to accommodate the product volume demands. However, the new pharma era of today is dramatically different due to all the reasons presented here. The wide variety of complex protein therapeutics developed to address a growing and diverse set of clinical indications driven through different biotech business models is putting pressure on drug developer to lower production costs and to meeting varying market product demands. This changing market dynamics and the cost reduction pleas are driving the need for innovative biomanufacturing facility designs, especially for contract pro service providers. Thus, the challenge is how do we build a service platform and the facilities to meet these demands now and in future without sacrificing quality. Next generation biomanufacturing facilities are emerging to meet these challenges with value, not volume driving the design. These new facilities are now focused on multi-product and scale-out design, which offer flexibility, scalability, efficiency, safety, and regulatory compliance. Currently, the mature and the widely recognized the maximum scale for single-use disposable bioreactors is 2,000 liter. So how could the 2,000 liter disposable scale meet 100 kilo or more market demands compared to a 10,000 liter stainless steel tank process, assuming no difference in cell line productivity levels? The answer is with the scale-out strategy design where multiple 2,000 liter single-use disposable bioreactors are employed to provide the same volume of cell culture material as a single 10,000 liter production runs in roughly the same amount of time. Wuxi Biologics has uniquely put those ideas into best practice and is operating a next generation scale out facility while also keeping cost control as a primary objective. Our 460,000 square feet facility is now alive as the world's largest mammalian cell culture manufacturing facility using disposable bioreactors. It consists of two 1,000 liter perfusion and 14 2,000 liter fat batch capacity with a traditional column and membrane based downstream operation. The facility has the capability to make over 1,000 kilo of product per year 
from either its perfusion or fat batch suite. Now let us focus on the scale-up strategy and its unique advantages. Manufacturing process determines biologic product is a well-recognized axiom in the biopharmaceutical drug development industry. This is because the biomanufacturing process has a significant impact on the many critical quality attributes of the product. The physiological microenvironment created for cell growth and the secretion of a desired product is determined by the selected production cell line, medium feed strategy, and the bioreactor design and operation. Most of the critical quality attributes of a biologics product are determined by the upstream cell culture process. In addition, most of the impurity types and their levels are also derived from cell culture stage. Because of scaling up, the cell culture process changes the microenvironment, which can in turn greatly impact and change product quality and the process characteristics. The ability to scale up manufacturing is often a key element for success when a biologics development program moves from the early talks to clinic and then to commercial scales. During scale-up development, the process development efforts to maintain comparable products and process performance can be very time and resource intensive and costly. However, with the scale-up strategy, we can completely eliminate such risk and ensure the product quality produced from the bioreactor is consistent throughout the clinical and commercial stages for any given biologics development program because the microenvironment and the scale of the manufacturing never changes. Similar concepts can also apply to the various downstream purification steps by carefully designing the process column size and by only increasing the cycle number within the demonstrated in-process product stability time period. The risk for downstream process scale up can also be significantly reduced. The potential advantages for process validation using a scale out strategy can be enormous. Traditionally, during phase three, the process can only be validated at its desired commercial scale. This approach limits the flexibility in changing manufacturing scale should the post-market approval product demands change. In contrast, in a scale-out validation strategy, it is possible to validate the process at a different scale at the same time using a bracket validation design. For example, a process may be able to be validated at both the three times 2,000 liter and the six times 2,000 liter scale over the course of three to four conformance runs. Variation of this bracket design could be implemented depending on expected best and worst case demanding scenarios. Of course, our recommendation would be to discuss with the relevant regulatory agencies for your validation strategy based on process need. This slide is a quick plot scheme to show the three times 2K versus six times 2K process validation run design. By validating the process at two different scales, commercial process can be more flexible to adapt to product market needs. The operational risk of any given commercial production campaign can also be significantly reduced because a rare single event within a bioreactor would still allow the batch to be processed from the other bioreactors, which in the long run will also help to decrease the program overall cost of goods. To expand in a comment I made earlier about the market demand fluctuation, most of the time a defined commercial scale is determined by a market projection analysis. Due to the length of time required to establish and implement commercial manufacturing plans, the analysis is often done years before product launch. Such analysis will thus have gaps, and those gaps could be significant ones. When real market demands after the product is launched differs from the original projections. In addition, each product has its own life cycle in terms of the market demands, 
which could be influenced by many factors, such as competition, patient population change, disease breakout. Again, the scale-out strategy designed with a flexible process validation package would allow drug manufacturers to adapt better and faster to those challenges and allow product companies to manage in their product life cycle more efficiently and more effectively. In a multi-use facilities with different products, the scale-out strategy provides an easy answer for facility fitness to a wide range of products with a different productivity and market demands. And a scale-out facility utilizing single-use disposable systems is also ideal for multi-product manufacturers to control cross-contamination while shortening the time and decreasing the cost of cleaning between different product production campaigns. The manufacturing, despite the advantages of disposable technology, the cost control challenge can increase as the scale goes up. Though this is really product and the process specific, and it's not the case in every campaign, we'll share some of our thoughts dealing with the cost control for facilities using a single-use bioreactor reactor scale-out design. The manufacturing cost consists of many parts. Downstream is one of the major contributors, especially for products that require expensive protein A resin for purification. One of the solutions to this dilemma is to implement continuous processing technology. Much effort has been made at Wuxi Biologics to demonstrate the process performance and the feasibility of GMP plant operation using continuous processing technology and in particular, a continuous protein A capture process. We are closely working with industry leading vendors to design and implement continuous processing in our perfusion and the fat batch facilities. Secondly, thoughtful design with a disposable and a stainless steel hybrid system can provide a synergistic cost con cost control effect by taking cost saving benefits from both systems. Upstream process can obtain all benefits from scaling out using smaller scale disposable bioreactors and the operational cost reduction from disposable technology, while medium buffer preparation and the cell culture harvest can be conducted in the large stainless steel tanks and the continuous centrifuge. Utilization of traditional chromatography column also allow additional saving. Therefore, as the table shown here, the overall cost of a hybrid disposable bioreactor scale out facility versus a commercial facility using traditional stainless steel scale up model could be comparable or cheaper if initial facility construction and the validation costs are considered. Lastly, I would like to touch up on a few points from a regulatory compliance perspective, the increasing maturity of disposable technology and the increased understanding and clear regulatory guideline for extractable and leachable control, plus wide usage in clinical manufacturing have addressed many critical regulatory concerns of using disposable bioreactor technology for commercial manufacturing. In addition, encouragement from regulatory agencies for new technology adaptation also paves the road for scale out approach and the continuous processing technology implementation. We also apply traditional room classification and the campaign operations to manage multi product facilities, which can further strengthen the regulatory compliance. This slide summarizes our discussion today and highlights the significant advantages of a scale out manufacturing approach using 2,000 liter single use bioreactors. Its flexibility, scalability, and the cost effectiveness make it the ideal solution not only for often and the blockbuster manufacturing for biologics in your pipeline, but also for emergency production for breakout disease control and the easy market penetration of biosimilars and the novel biologics in emerging countries. Just a quick words on Wuxi Biologics, if you are not familiar with our organization, 
We currently maintain our discovery, development, manufacturing, and testing capability within three locations in China, only 160 kilometers of each other. The close proximity of the entire discovery, development, and the value chain is unprecedented and unique within the CMO market. Currently, we have about 2,500 employees and serves a variety of clients from U.S., Europe, Asian, and the domestic companies in China. Wuxi Biologics is a pure service company, and we have supported one BLA filing and over 60 global INDs for our clients. We look forward to continue to contribute to the drug development value chain and bringing affordable drugs to benefit the patients globally. Finally, I would like to acknowledge our Wuxi Biologics employees our clients with whom we have valuable partnership and the vendor teams involved in supporting our innovative scale-out business model, utilizing single-use bioreactor for clinical and the commercial strategies. Thank you all for joining me today. I would like to stop here and I would be happy to take any questions. Thanks, Jay. So the first question is, wouldn't the multi-scale validation approach you mentioned actually be more time-consuming and costly than the traditional method? As we can see from slide 11, the upstream validation from a regular three-batch design would give you nine data points for 302K or 18 data points for 6x2K. Therefore, at any given scale, scale-out validation strategy will provide a much better data package for BLA submission and the reduce CTV work and cost after product launch. For downstream, with thoughtful design, you may only need to modify the downstream process slightly different and design the sampling plan appropriately. You can achieve the multi-scale validation package with minimum cost increase. And how are costs less and the timeline faster for changeover using scale-out mode versus traditional scale-out? Yes, thanks. That's a very good question. So the single, uh, let's just use the uh, single-use bioreactor with the uh, standing steel bioreactor as an example. The single-use bioreactor usually need uh, about one day to change over, while compared to the standing steel, because it requires CIP, SIP for change over, it would take additional two to three days in average. So therefore, if you're saving two to three days on average for per production runs and the overall course of the year, you probably can save almost uh, one entire production runs uh, for the saving by using disposable um, facility versus uh, traditional steaming steel facilities. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I think that's all the time we have for questions today. So if you had a question and we didn't get to it, um, we'll pass it along to Jay and Wishy will follow up. So thank you for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website. And as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at our future Bioprocess International ASCII Expert webcast. Look for those announcements in your inbox.